Hey sisters, it's Özgün here. Finally, I beat the COVID. I feel so much better. Thanks for the support messages that you sent me. As you know, I couldn't shoot to finalizing and the mastering video for the Big Room Techno Remix. And I already released the remix because of the COVID. I couldn't, you know, talk and explain what I done. Instead, I just work alone without the cameras. And then I just released the remix and decided to shoot this last part. This is not going to be a long part. This is the part that I'm going to explain several things that I didn't include in the first two parts. And I'm going to show my mastering chain how I mastered that track before I releasing it. And if you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. So first of all, I thought the drop was a little bit empty and it wasn't impacting much. And that's why I decided to add a step horn sound and which is this one. So it has a really long sustain and it's just covered tons of frequencies in the drop. And also that sound is so fat and it's just doing its job. It, if I just solo the kick bass and the horn, you will get it. So for this sound, as I remember, I used Serum and that was huge horn hit, some sound like that. That's a pretty heavy sustained horn sound and the way I processed is just at the DST and didn't even change any parameters just to fatten the sound a little bit. Cut the low frequencies, not even coloring or making anything fancy. And I have the side chain, and yeah, I and yeah, I have it on the both drops in the first drop and in the second drop. And other than that, if you realize the previous part doesn't contain the LFO buildup in the second part of the YouTube video. In the second buildup, we are just directly introducing the drop leads, but instead, I decided it's a little bit too repetitive, so I like to add some extra to the second buildup. So I come up with something like that. <laughs> As you see, it's adding tons of tension to the second drop and it's making the se second drop impact even harder. So to make this sound, I duplicate the main drop lead and maybe I can just show you how I done this one. So this was the drop lead, right? <laughs> I clone the drop lead and I just put a sustain note and then as you see we have the LFO in here. And the LFOs are already connected to the oscillators. If not, you can just drag drop and connect them to the oscillators and go to trigger in here. Deactivate the BPM if it's activated and you can give a little bit release decay sustain to the sound to make it more sustainable. Now, if I just play the note. As you see, when we set up the first LFO like that, make this shape, connect them to by just drag drop to the oscillators, even the noises and go trigger, turn off BPM. And then if you just move the rate, you get this LFO effect. So that's pretty easy, but after that, let's go back to the LFO section in here. Let's activate that lead again. So after that, I put them in a separate channel and in here we have the endless smile just automating towards the drop to give it more washout effects. And this one is the LFO rate. As you see in here, if you just check the rate and the check the automation, you will see that the automation is controlling the rate. <laughs> So I thought the LFO is good, but at the same time, I needed to automate the pitch to even make it more tension. So in the second part of the build up, I automated the pitch 
of the serum but we also get the pitch up effect with the LFO riser effect and I'm just supporting it with a filter just a fruity filter <laughs> And with this, we can get a really decent LFO build up. And let me show it to you. And yeah, in the second part when I'm pitching up the LFO, I'm introducing the leads again. So it doesn't make sense without the introducing of the melody. So I'm just filtering it in the main drop leads as well. And there's one important thing. As you see, I automated the LFO riser volume in like this the amount that is sending to the master channel because if i just automate the, let's say the volume of the serum from here i will still have the reverb tail towards the drop but i don't like that i like this because when we are going closer to the drop the lfo riser is going crazy with tons of fx and endless smile and its own delay reverb so it probably will clash with the first impact of the drop so that's why i like to just cut it 100 person so it doesn't have a tail that clash with my drop elements and as you see in the outro i'm introducing the lfo leads again like that so i just like to still use that sound because i really enjoyed that sound even in the outro it can add something extra to the ending of the track and probably yeah guys other than that it's all same with the project that i make in the first two parts maybe i make some balances before i release but i don't remember something specifically as i remember everything should be the same as the first two parts and yeah now we can just take a look to the mastering of the track so as you see in my mastering chain, I have this patch, Endless Cry. So it's just adding some washout fix when we're going closer to the drops. This one, the first automation is belong to this plugin. And after that plugin, I have this EQ. I'm just cutting out a little bit of low frequencies because there are some unwanted rumble, which doesn't in the key of the track. I usually don't cut those frequencies, but in this case, I just test it and it becomes so much cleaner. So I decided to cut everything below 30 hertz. And as you see, I'm cutting the side information below 150 hertz to keep everything in mono. As you see, there are so little rumbling going on in the stereo side, in the side frequencies. So we definitely don't want it to keep the keep kick and bass mono and more sustainable all the time. Bra Brainworks Digital Version 3 plugin. So this plugin is the EQ, but I'm not using it for EQ. Only thing I'm using it, the stereo width section in here. And I'm just giving it well, like 30 percent stereo width with just affecting my mix making my mix a little bit more white without you know killing it that much and i usually just go make the first 100 hertz mono in here so the, the 30 percent stereo width doesn't affect my low end but i didn't do that in here instead i just use another imager in the later in the cha chain but yeah, this is just giving a little bit of stereo width and other parameters I didn't even touch. And after that, we have this bus compressor. I'm trying to get approximately 4 or 3 decibels of gain reduction in the loudest part of my track, which is the drops. So if I play the drop... <laughs> So as you see, we are getting kind of two or three decibels of gain reduction. I'm, I'm just leaving it in here. So my mix was actually clipping more than four. But instead to lower every mixer channel in my track, I just go to the EQ and make it minus three decibels in here until it's just below 
4 decibels of gain reduction because if I get more than 4 decibels of gain reduction with these settings which means my mix down is a little bit too loud and I could have some problems on the maximization uh, settings on the end of the chain. So that's why if my mix is too loud and if I'm too lazy to fix the mixers I can just go back one of the channels in here and just reduce the amount. So this is called gain staging, right? I'm just feeding every plugin in a good amount of signal. So yeah, I dip it three decibels from fab filter. So my compressor doesn't fed with too much too loud signal. And with it, it makes it job very well. If I just keep it on less than four dBs with these settings, this glue settings. So after the compressor, I like to color my mix and I most of the time I'm using this plugin for my tracks, main sections, lows, mids and highs. And in here, I didn't touch low frequencies. I just give one dB probably uh, gain boost on the four kilohertz. So I'm just boosting the mid frequencies a little bit and I'm just boosting the 8K, the top end a little bit. So it just really slightly, really subtle coloring, but it's affecting the whole mix down. Maybe I can show up before and after. <laughs> As you see, this plugin is really transparent and one of the best plugins for coloring the masters. So I always use it, but just one or two dBs, you know, not much. Just to make some final little coloring touch. And after that, I'm having this ozone imager. I'm not working on my star replacement. All I did is just make below 150 hertz totally mono because as you remember in here we give 30 percent of star width which could affect my low end that's why i need needed to make sure my low end becomes mono again so as i remember medix was using this plugin so this is an auto eq plugin but i use it really subtle if i'm if i have some annoying resonances it's gonna take care of that frequencies and if I have some missing frequencies, it's gonna just fill those frequencies. It's like a live EQ. And I can show you how it works. <laughs> So I don't hear that much difference when I activate or disable the plugin, but it's just adding one or two dB in the certain parts. So I just use it maybe 20%, maybe 25%. And after all these things, this is my mastering. This is my maximizer. I always use the hard clip. I always use a clipper to boost my mixes, to maximize my mixes instead of using a limiter or, or a maximizer. I feel like boosting it with clipper is a little bit more easy and it doesn't add that much character to my mixes. It's just making it loud, that's all. I'm on the hard clip mode in here and I'm just boosting my mix 7.5 decibels until it distorts. <laughs> Yeah, as you see, I'm just boosting it until it distorts, just boosting it till the limits. But may but usually you don't need to boost that much. Maybe it's a little bit too much, but I like to get louder mixes. And the limiter after it just doing nothing because the clippers are probably not designed to use a maximizer. I'm putting a limiter to just be safe. It's not doing anything. It's just there just to prevent some clips. If I have, if the clippers just miss some clips, the limiter is going to take care of them. Again, this trick, I saw it on the medics and till then I'm just using it on all of my tracks. And yeah, after that, this is just nothing. This is just to monitor the things. 
And that's it guys. After I have the settings, after I got settings, I'm just rendering the track with this settings. I rendered 16 bits. Make sure you have the resampling on the maximum and make sure if you are not rendering 32 bits, make sure to activate detailing. It's really important because most of the samples are 24 bits or maybe 32 bits in the track. And if we lower the resolution by rendering a master with 16 bit, which means we are lowering the resolution of some of the samples and it can get some annoying artifacts on the mix. If you choose the track, there won't be any hearable artifacts. It's just fixing it. And yeah, other than that, make sure to choose trim, pre-delay, compens and silence and enable insert effects and that's it. You can just render it like that and now it's release ready. So yeah guys, today I like to show you this quick tutorial just to fill the missing parts of the first two parts of the Making Big Room Techno Remix video. I hope you can apply this to your own productions too guys. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye bye.